Oh, look, it's a, it's a big event film. It's visually stunning. The, the soundtrack, the sound is epic. Uh, it, it's transportive. Uh, it, it, for me, going to the films of the cinemas is, is about being taken to another universe, and this is what this film provides, and it's fun. The action's incredible. Well, it's an origin story, so I think, you know, we've always known Optimus Prime and Megatron as enemies, and now to discover they're once upon a time friends, or the best of friends, brothers in fact, um, is something new for people, I think, and, and it really makes the, the departure or the, the breakup of that friendship all the more heartfelt because of how close they were to begin with. So I think people are going to be surprised by that and, uh, and really enjoy it. <laughs> I've got a few of them. <laughs> i got a few D16s in my life. Uh, my, my trainer, Luke Zocchi, a guy I, I've known since I was six years old, um, but minus the you know, betrayal and, and, <laughs> and the breaking up of friendship. I mean, it's, uh, I think the weather's pretty consistent all year round, which is a bonus. And uh, there's, just, you know, it's strange alien life forms wherever you look, visually stunning, all sorts of sights and sounds and colors. So pick your month because at uh, 12 months a year, it's, it's, it's hopping. Uh, how did I get into character? I listened to a lot of Peter Cullen um, and it wasn't ever about mimicking what he had done but I wanted it as a sort of reference point and also an end point. And, and this character is, you know, it's an origin story. So he's a lot younger than uh, the version of Optimus Prime that we've all known for many years and loved. So there was a spontaneity and a sort of youthfulness and a playfulness that needed, uh, needed to be, that needed to resonate through the, the voice. So we had, a, we had a lot of fun and it was a constant collaboration. I'd listen to what Brian was doing and then Josh, the director, would cut it together and, and, and we'd both be able to react off what one another was offering up. Oh my God, because it's larger than life. You know what, this is the first time that viewers are ever going to see uh, Transformers that is all Transformers, like just no humans allowed in this one. It's on their planet, Cybertron. And the way that Josh has built this universe is like larger than life. So the scale of cinema is the best way to do it, yeah. Um, energetic, explosive, and heartbreaking. Great. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I've been a fan of Transformers since I was a child. You know, it's over 40 years old. It was a part of Saturday morning cartoons. And we just never really got to, like, see them at their beginning. We always knew that Megatron and Optimus Prime were foes. So to see them as brothers and to actually see them, like, have jobs and try to figure out their place in their world and, and before they can even transform is something that is really appealing because it brings the humanity to who they are. Oh my gosh, the Orion Pax. You know what, it's really interesting. I have quite a few friends that I obtained in college, which was almost over 20 years ago that I still have. My best friend Kenny is definitely my Optimus Prime. I can't believe I'm giving him this because like he's going to use this against me forever, but he is. Like he's he's been there thick and thin. He's also talked me into a lot of dumb stuff, uh, much like Optimus did to Megatron. Uh, but you know what, I know that his heart is in the right place and you know, we all need one of those. So, you know, Kenny, I love you, man. Thank you. People should not visit Cybertron personally because you won't survive because it's in space. But if you go to the movies, you will be completely blown away. John Josh and, our, and our ILM have done this amazing, amazing work with developing the art of Cybertron. It's larger than life. It was so amazingly art deco, but tech at the same time and futuristic. It's really gorgeous. Um, the, this movie was made for the biggest screen. Um, it's really, I think my daughter saw this movie a few days ago. She's 10 and I, she had never seen an animated film with so much action before and I think the action and the soundscape and the, what ILM did with all of the animation and the texture of it, you know, you want to see, you, it, to, in order to experience it, you really want to see it like as giant as possible with that huge surround sound and a big old bucket of popcorn. <laughs> It's a completely new, fresh take. I mean, even going into it, I said to Josh, I was like, okay, what do you want me to, like, what, should I watch anything before this? Or, you know, like, what is, am I, you know, it's obviously a, it's a, a story that's a, a really, like, a whole new beginning, this kind of prequel, if you will. Um, and I, you know, he said to me, he's like, You're, you've got to create this all on your own. I want something, like, completely new. So I think that's really like the excitement of it. It's like nothing you've seen before. Paramount UK, yes. all right, yeah, that yeah. seems appropriate. I think that the visuals of this movie 
are absolutely breathtaking, and people should see this on as large a screen as they can. I think everybody should see this thing in 40X, IMAX, whatever you can, because it's, by the way, the reason is because it's the first time we're seeing Cybertron when it's a thriving planet not when it's in ruins, and in the, it's just an unbelievable, unbelievable visual feast. It's the, the breadth of the film. Also, um, uh, I think people will enjoy uh, the emotionality of it. That's the big thing. This movie is ostensibly a love story, and then also the action, which everybody makes perfect sense. It's an action movie, but the, the action in this thing is it's incredible, incredible, yeah. Oh, that um, um, Septembrous. Septembrus is the name of the month that everybody should go to Cybertron. Not too hot, not too cold, because you know, it's metal. It's metal, so it gets really hot when the, because there's two suns. So it gets really, really, I have no idea, there might be four suns, but, but it gets really hot on the metal. <laughs> so you want to get there in the, in Septembrus, or what we on Earth would call fall. Yes. <laughs> the most Badassatron skill is saying Badassatron. Being able to say it, right? <laughs> this movie is epic. The whole thing's like a sci-fi adventure. It's massive in fact i mean we shot it with the with the imax in mind like I, I just wanted to feel like this is something that could never be shot on earth it's awesome it's really fun in fact you just said it it's, it's playing with the characters and you know in, in 3d it basically is a 3d model that you move around like a puppet so um as we were animating like fight scenes and stuff it felt like we were going oh let's make them like go like this like you were actually playing with the toys all over again so it brought me back to being a kid well, the origin story is what got me in, interested in doing this movie. I mean, the um, you know we've seen these characters be enemies, but to see them actually have a relationship and to, and you know to be friends, knowing that they are going to become enemies, it just makes the story a little more tragic and emotional, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> um, I don't think humans should visit. I don't think there's very much oxygen up there, so um, but probably summer. Epic, fun, uh, emotion. Is that a debate? I don't, I, I'd say that they're this, they're good to, when they're Orion Pax and D16. They're one person, one character. But when they're, you know, when they fight, they're apart. So I'm, I'm trying to work this out in my brain just to answer your question. Uh, Optimus Prime. Well, animation allows you to have infinite choice, and we've got already got large robots. So with animation, it's just even more incredible. Well, what it definitely brings is you get to meet both Optimus Prime and Megatron before they were those characters. And so you'll come to understand them in a way you've never had before. It's been really fun, you know, and, and actually going on Cybertron, doing a whole movie on Cybertron is pretty great. And again, it allows you to do almost anything your imagination can come up with. So we have a planet that transforms. I mean, come on, how cool is that? Well, you know, it changes after this movie. It's going to be hard to choose between the two. I still lean towards Optimus, but I feel I feel differently about Megatron after this movie. Um, well, it has to have something to do with the moon, I'm going to guess. But um, I would say that you definitely want to be there in summer. Dynamic, emotional, visually, visually. Wow, I mean, I think this movie, even though it's animation, feels almost at the edge of uh, photo reel. And, it, you know, when I watch this movie, sometimes I forget it's animated. So the scope and scale of it and the movement, the camera movement, the cinematics of it, I think is in a lot of ways are better, more impressive and more visual than the live action movies. When you see it in 3D, it will blow your mind. Like it's really more of an experience than it is a movie. Well, it's, you know, I, I love movies where there's an arch villain, you know, the, the villains in a lot of ways define these movies. Um, but you also want to know why they're the villain. And for me personally, what was interesting was to figure out why Megatron hated Optimus Prime. And this was a story we knew we could never tell in live action because the entire world is created. So it would take, you know, $500 million to make this movie in live action. So once, once we got everybody on board with an animated movie, we knew we could tell that story, which was the story we always wanted to tell. I mean, I think it brings real emotion for the robots. In the live action movies, the robots are all servicing humanity. They're trying to save humankind. In this movie, for the first time, you're really getting under their skin and, and understanding who they are. We say as people, they're not people, but, but you get the idea. I mean, that's, that's what's special about this. Transformers should be seen on the biggest screen possible because we built it that way. We wanted to make sure that this movie was big, 
and loud and also visually stunning. So that way you get the full experience in a movie theater. And I believe the movie theater is the best place to see a film because you have an audience around you that also creates the vibe. And I'm so proud of this movie that we accomplished all of it. I think we went back to the origin story because people wanted to understand how we got to where we are in today's sort of, you know, Transformers world. And it's really just a great, compelling story about, you know, two best friends that become arch enemies. And it's, it's a great story to tell. Josh did an amazing job and with our amazing cast. Oh my God, it's just turned out fantastic. Going to work with these characters in the animation was so cool and having Industrial Light and Magic, the original, like, visual effects animation company, um, was amazing. They did a fantastic job breathing all of those characters into life and having our voice team um, just with such great voices and, and great performances. I got you know Brian next to me and he's incredible. They're all incredible. It was, it was an honor for me to be able to be in the room and watch them all the time because Josh um, did an amazing job directing them and, and these guys are fantastic actors. Three words to describe the film. Epic, gorgeous and emotional.